Hi, boys and girls. Today is Friday, June 5th, and I'm going to read you a chapter of World Dolls, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. We are in chapter 26 today called The Television Chocolate Room. And we're almost done with the book. So I'm hoping to be done by Monday so you might get a chapter tomorrow and Sunday as well. Because we do 26 today, 27 Saturday. And we could do 28 on Sunday. 29... We'll do 29 and 30 on Monday, and then we'll be done. Here we go. The television chocolate room. The TV family, together with Charlie and Grandpa Joe, stepped out of the elevator into a room so dazzling bright and dazzling white that they screwed up their eyes in pain and started walking. Mr. Wonka handed each of them a pair of dark glasses and said, put these on quick and don't take them off in here. Whatever you do, the light could blind you. As soon as Charlie had his glasses on, he was able to look around him in, dis in comfort. He saw a long, narrow room. The room was painted white all over. Even the floor was white, and there wasn't a speck of dust anywhere. From the ceiling, huge lamps hung down and bathed the room in a brilliant blue-white light. The room was completely bare except at the far ends. At one of these ends, there was an enormous camera on wheels, and a whole army of Oompa Loompas was clustering around it, oiling its joints and adjusting its knobs and polishing its great glass lens. The Oompa Loompas were all dressed in the most extraordinary way. They were wearing bright red spacesuits, complete with helmets and goggles. At least they looked like spacesuits, and they were working in complete silence. Watching them, Charlie experienced a queer sense of danger. There was something dangerous about this whole business, and the Oompa Loompas knew it. There was no chattering or singing among them here, and they moved about over the huge black camera slowly and carefully in their scarlet space suits. Here they are. At the under, other end of the room, about 50 paces away from the camera, a single Oompa Loompa, also wearing a space suit, was sitting at a black table gazing at the screen of a very large television set. Here we go, cried Mr. Wonka, hopping up and down with excitement. This is the testing room for my very latest and greatest invention, television chocolate. But what is television chocolate, cried Mike TV. Good heavens, child, stop interrupting me, said Mr. Wonka. It works by television. I don't like television myself. I suppose it's all right in small doses, but children never seem to be able to take it in small doses. They want to sit there all day long, staring and staring at the screen. That's me, said Mike TV. Shut up said Mr. TV. Thank you, said Mr. Wonka. I shall now tell you how this amazing television set of mine works. But first of all, do you know how ordinary television works? It is very simple. At one end, where the picture is being taken, you have a large movie camera and you start photographing something. The photographs are then split up into a million of millions of tiny little pieces which are so small that you can't see them and these little pieces are shot out into the sky by electricity. In the sky, they go whizzing around all over the place until suddenly they hit the antenna on the roof of someone's house. Then they go flashing down the wire that leads right into the back of the television set. And in there, they get jiggled and joggled around until at least every single one of those millions of tiny pieces is fitted back into its right place, just like a jigsaw puzzle. And presto, the photograph appears on the screen. That isn't exactly how it works, Mike TV said. I'm a little deaf in my left ear, Mr. Wonka said. You must forgive me if I don't hear everything you say. I said, that isn't exactly how it works, shouted Mike TV. You're a nice boy, Mr. Wonka said, but you talk too much. Now then, the very first time I saw ordinary television working, I was struck by a tremendous idea. Look here, I shouted. If these people can break up a photograph into millions of pieces and send the pieces whizzing through the air and then put them ag together again at the other end, why can't I do the same thing with a bar of chocolate? Why can't I send a real bar of chocolate whizzing through the air and in tiny pieces and then put the pieces together in the other end all ready to be eaten? Impossible, said Mike TV. You think so? cried Mr. Wonka. Well, watch this. I shall now send a bar of my very best chocolate from one end of the room to the other by television. Get ready there. Bring in the chocolate. 
Immediately, six Oompa Loompas marched forward, carrying on their shoulders the most enormous bar of chocolate Charlie had ever seen. It was about the size of the mattress he slept on at home. It has to be big, Mr. Wonka explained, because whenever you send something by television, it always comes out much smaller than it was when we went in. Even with ordinary television, when you photograph a big man, he never comes out of your screen any taller than a pencil, does he? Here we go, then. Get ready. No, no, stop. Hold everything. You there, Mike TV, stand back. You're too close to the camera. There's dangerous rays coming out of that thing. You could, they could break you into a million tiny pieces in one second. That's why the Oompa Loompas are wearing spacesuits. The suits protect them. All right, that's better. Now then, switch on. One of the Oompa Loompas caught hold of a large switch and pulled it down. There was a blinding light. The chocolate's gone, shouted Grandpa Joe, waving his arms. Here's a picture. He was quite right. The whole enormous bar of chocolate had disappeared completely into thin air. It's on its way, cried Mr. Wonka. It is now rushing through the air above our heads in a million tiny pieces. Quick, come over here. He dashed over to the other end of the room where the large television set was standing and the others followed him. Watch the screen, he cried. Here it comes, look. The screen flickered and lit up. Then suddenly a small bar of chocolate appeared in the middle of the screen. Take it shouted Mr. Wonka, growing more and more excited. How can you take it? cried Mike TV, laughing. It's just a picture on a television screen. Charlie Bucket, cried Mr. Wonka. You take it. Reach out and grab it. Charlie put out his hand and touched the screen, and suddenly, miraculously, the bar of chocolate came away in his fingers. He was so surprised he nearly dropped it. Eat it, shouted Mr. Wonka. Go on and eat it. It'll be delicious. It's the same bar. It's gotten smaller in the journey, that's all. It's absolutely fantastic, gasped Grandpa Joe. It's, it's a miracle. Just imagine, cried Mr. Wonka, when I start using this across the country, you'll be sitting at home watching television and suddenly a commercial will flash onto the screen and a voice will say, eat Won Wonka's chocolates. They're the best in the world. If you don't believe us, try one on for yourself. Now, you simply reach out and take one. How about th that, eh? Terrific, said Grandpa Joe. It will change the world. Okay, see you tomorrow for chapter 27. Mike TV is sent by television.